If you're making a play this morning, where are you looking for the 2024 Super Bowl? Yeah, so, I mean, of those teams you mentioned, I mean, the Chiefs, I, I genuinely believe, are in a better position than a lot of those teams. The craziest thing about this year is this was supposed to be the down year, right? This was supposed to be, all right, first year without Tyreek Hill. We're playing a ton of rookies. They were top five in rookie snaps played overall on the team. But on both sides of the ball, they also had a good amount of rookie snaps, so it wasn't just focused on one side of the ball. And now they're going to get you know get better, add more players, have more development and more growth. So, they, they should be the odds on favorite by a DC margin. Obviously, they are. Um, and then, like, teams like Cincinnati, like, look, T. Higgins being a Bengal next year, I don't think is as big of a guarantee as maybe other people uh, think it is. Like, there's going to be some teams that take a step back, and the Chiefs already did. Uh, so, long answer short there, I, I think you probably want to wait and maybe get better odds if things happen this offseason or whatever the case may be. But the Chiefs yeah. are, I think, you know, they're, they're ahead of everyone else right now by a good margin. Is, is there someone down the board you would look at, though? Like maybe speculation, yeah. QB change? Are you going to say the Jets? Is that what you're going to do? I'm going to say – I'm not going to say the Jets. <laughs> I think Jacksonville at plus 2,500. I think we don't realize that you're adding in Calvin Ridley, who could be – you know, if, if he returns to the, the Calvin Ridley we know, a legitimate number one wide receiver throwing him onto this roster. Um, their defense needs to get better, but super young as well and will get better. They have some money to spend if they want to add a couple more pieces – I think they could be, you know, a legitimate contender as early as next year. And then what about like a favorite long shot, knowing, you know, maybe some salary cap options who you could see making some offseason moves? Yeah, maybe the Detroit Lions. Yeah, a bit of a long shot of the NFC. Ooh. I know you're mentioning if Aaron Rodgers does leave and go to the Jets um, and gets out of the NFC North, I mean, I think the Lions win that division by four games. Like, I, I think the NFC North – Sands Aaron Rodgers is a very bad division. I think the Vikings are going to take a massive step back next year and maybe miss the playoffs. So um, that would be one where if they can go out, add some pieces, uh, get a healthy Jameson Williams to play. I saw a stat he had three touches this year. They were all like 40-plus yards. Like That's the dynamic kind of guy he is. Um, I, I think the Lions are going to get a lot of buzz, uh, maybe too much, but, but I think they have some – You know, those, those long odds are worth a bet maybe right now. Brad, earlier we talked about the Eagles uh, you know, having – they showed staying power the way they played this season, but there's a lot of changes coming quickly. On they have eight free agents on defense. Gannon could leave. Psyche could leave. Are, the Eagles are they going to be the class of the NFC next year, or do you expect a step back with a tougher schedule, coaching changes next year in Philadelphia? So the very interesting thing, I think they can get over Gannon. Look, I think he's a good coach, but I've heard he's you know and a great leader. Like he makes sense as a head coach. Their defense, realistically, from a schematic standpoint, was not like some diabolically, you know, incredible defense. They have talent, and he kept it fairly simple. Um, the thing that will be interesting to me is we know Shane Steichen was calling plays, and I think Nick Sirianni was the best game manager in the NFL, and that's probably why, right? Because he wasn't worrying about that. I mean, he put on a master class last night with the fourth down decisions and a lot of things he did. I didn't like the field goal to go up six, but – a lot of the things he did were great. This isn't a flash in the pan. This isn't a one and done. I mean, Jalen Hurts looked awesome last night. He did, and I would have to think that um, getting him a new deal would be at the top of the Eagles list because he doesn't have that fifth-year option. And the way, like, with his style of play, it could be a little scary the way he likes to run the ball a lot. Do you think he's going to get, like, a Mahomes-type structure, or what do you think the Eagles do here? It'd be interesting. I mean, uh, you know, he uh, probably wants to. Most quarterbacks want to go back to kind of the four-year deal and not have that super long, you know, 10-year contract. I also have a feeling Patrick Mahomes is going to be redoing that deal this offseason as well. But, um, you know, I, I think <laughs> we'll, we'll see with him as maybe a five-year deal, um, I would guess, in the $50 million per year range. And, and, look, yes, he's always going to be a runner. He's going to have that element to his game. But last night you saw, again, I mean, a lot of the downfield passing, obviously the A.J. Brown touchdown, but a bunch of other really nice throws, manipulated the pocket well, didn't bail from clean pockets as much as he had, I think, in a couple recent games, really stood in there and was willing to kind of, you know, withstand some pressure. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't be super concerned. Obviously, the, the cheat code sneak play worked like a half a dozen times last night, so always good to have that in the yeah. back pocket as well. But for me, like, the concerns from a playing style standpoint – He's such a big dude, too, right? He can take those hits, and I think it's different than if you're worried about a smaller guy taking those hits. Um, I, I would have no, no issue paying him this offseason if I was the Eagles GM. Try to put your thoughts on Mahomes in perspective now. Joe was saying earlier, five years, five title games, three Super Bowl trips, 
two Super Bowls. I mean, they, I think we can make a fair case. This is the best start to a career by a quarterback we've ever seen. Maybe Brady's the only one close, but he didn't have quite the personal accolades, right? He wasn't an MVP of the league back then. I don't know if we've ever seen anything like this. I legitimately think if he retires tomorrow, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Like, I really do. And it might sound silly, but, you know, you, I, for me, I think the prime is a big part of the Hall of Fame. Yes, longevity matters. I think it's cool if you're durable and can play for, you know, 10, 15 seasons. But if you have the greatest, you know, five-season window we've ever seen, that probably should get you in there as well. So, look, he was phenomenal. I think in, in the main way we talked about, yes, the field conditions may be a factor. But one of the bets I gave out on here last week was, Eagles under two and a half sacks was plus money to get under two and a half sacks. They had zero. I mean, and that is, look, you can credit the offensive line all you want. They are, of course, part of it. Andrew Wiley, I know, had a good game against Reddick. You know, he slipped a lot. All this, but at the end of the day, he was shifting around the pocket, avoiding pressure. He had that throw to Travis Kelsey. I think it was third down where he was coming across the middle. And Mahomes, like, shook two defenders to be able to get that. Throw. I mean, that's. That on top of everything we talk about, that's also one of his crazy abilities. And then too, though, I do think Andy Reid deserves a ton of credit. I mean, two touchdown passes that everyone on this call could have thrown last night. Um, I mean, just walk in touchdowns to Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony. Um, but yeah, I mean, Mahomes. That's it, it's crazy. That's like you go into these games, like you said, it's Steph Curry. Like, yeah, the Eagles probably have a better roster at all these spots, but they have Patrick Mahomes. Of all your Super Bowl bets, you can go. You can go anywhere, even if it's you know some of the fun stuff. Of all your Super Bowl bets, what was your favorite hit, and then the most fr frustrating loss? Yeah, so my favorite hit was Patrick Mahomes. There was a head-to-head -head bet on DraftKings. You could do Patrick Mahomes minus a half touchdown against Jalen Hurts, passing touchdown only, um, and, and it was. Um, it was minus 110, like, like a straight bet. And I just thought, look, when you get into the red zone for the Eagles, if they're going to get down there, they're going to run the football, whether it's with the running backs or with Jalen Hurts. He, of course, had the, you know, the rushing touchdown. He actually had the octopus uh, where you score a touchdown and get the two-point <laughs> conversion with the same player. But, but yeah, so that one is just like, you know, independent of game script. I, I just thought, look, the Chiefs are going to be looking to throw touchdown passes. The Eagles, I mean, look, yeah, the bomb to A.J. Brown. But when they get down there, they're not really looking to throw. Um, so that one was a good, and then I mentioned it earlier, but I, I'm not sure how I was so off on the, on the total. I, I got to go back and, you know, kind of poke holes in my own analysis there. I just, I thought we'd see more running and more churning of clock yeah. and, and just kind of avoiding some of the downfield passing. But honestly, I think both quarterbacks looked healthier than maybe I expected coming into this game. Um, you know, Hurts kicked on a few of those balls. Like I mentioned, Mahomes, yeah, he limped a little bit here and there, but I think he, he was relatively okay. He claims he didn't get a shot at halftime, um, but, you know, no reason not to believe him there. So, yeah, that was – that. I think it was frustrating. It was over – I knew it was over before it even started, so I just kind of, you know, threw that ticket away. But uh, I think most of the crazy props worked out. Any other takeaways from, like, your betting process, like what you learned or what you might do differently next year? I honestly think that in this game, because there are so many markets and so many different things you can do – there are ways to bet the angle you like on the spread, but if you don't like the spread, like in this scenario, I was on the Chiefs all week, but I didn't bet them plus one and a half. I bet Mahomes MVP plus 130, right? Like there was, there's other ways that I think you can just bet what you want to in the game. Um, and I think I'm going to do that even more going forward. You know, I had him, I had some Pacheco, you know, over rushing yards that hit, obviously, like just finding other avenues to bet the actual the team you like. And I think you can get better value um, by doing that instead of actually betting the spread itself. 